All right, everyone, welcome back to uh, day four CES 2014 commentary track. Uh, we got one more after this, which will be a short one. This one's actually probably going to be pretty short, too, if I remember the way I edited this. Uh, day four, I didn't get a whole lot. Um, so I got this one and then the day four extras. And then we'll finally be done after uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Finally, after 17 videos, we'll be done with the CES 2014 coverage. Um, so that is coming up. Sorry, guys, that it took so long and has been spaced out so much. I do have more stuff other than CES coming up, so stay tuned. I promise. Um, but anyway, let's get these done. Let's get on a roll, and let's get into day four of CES 2014. Again, me doing my opening. I'll we'll probably fast forward through this in post. Okay, now this item, uh, this is the first time we got over to the Venetian Hall. Uh, last year we didn't quite make it over there, so we decided to go over there this time. They actually had like three or four floors of the Venetian full of CS stuff. We only really did the first part of the first floor. Uh, looking at the map, it looked like a lot of the upper stairs floors were just like high-end car audio stuff, which we already saw a little bit of over in the other one. So unless you want to see really, really, really expensive car audio, there wasn't much point in going up there. This was where all the innovative... Uh, not copycat of everything else stuff was going to be. And this item here was actually a little jungle gym system type of thing. Um, each one of these little sensors would light up a different color. You would have two people playing, one representing red, one representing green. And as your color flashed on the thing, you had to run up and hit the sensor. And your opponent would have to try and block you at the same time getting their own. And whoever got the most points at the end won. Um, so this is just a quick little demo of these guys playing. Um, I forget which one. People kept... Okay, the thing about the Venetian Hall is a lot of people were very inconsiderate of the cameras. On the other floors, or in the main convention hall, people are really acknowledgeable of the cameras and try to stay out of your way if they can. And if they happen to step in front of it, they'll apologize real quickly. Like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to step in. You're like, oh, don't worry about it. Um, so, but in this hall, they just didn't care. They could see the cameras, and they would just step right in front of you and just stop and stand there so they were blocking your shot. And you're like, excuse me, could you move out of the way? And they would just kind of like scoff at you and walk away. So that was that. Um, someone did ask if that was submergible, like if you could use it in a pool. And I believe the guy said it was. Um, don't quote me on that, though, because uh, like I said, I cut out a lot of the audio and just put in the music. Um, speaking of that, why I'm taking out all the sound from this one is one, so you can hear me without talking over it. And two... Even though the music I put in these I get from royalty-free music sites, um, apparently one of the guys who had submitted his music to this royalty-free music site also submitted his music to the YouTube content ID thing. So even though it was a royalty-free song that I used in the Day 3 video, uh, when I uploaded it to YouTube, it got a content ID strike against it, which I acknowledge the copyright because it was the artist, it was his song, um, but I lose my monet monetization privileges for that video and they go to him um, so to avoid getting the day three commentary and any of these other ones uh, flagged with the same thing I just cut the audio out of these and you can just listen to my lovely golden voice talking to you okay moving on as you can see here we got the electro kids and you may notice these are really familiar because back in the 80s and 90s, we had these little dolls called Trolls, which keep going away and coming back every few years with different looks and designs. And this is the current generation of Troll dolls, and it's the Electro Kids. They're kind of like uh, different colored skins, partially transparent, uh, still the wild hair, and uh, different colored glasses in this one. But uh, yeah, so moving on. Uh, these are called MIPS. Um, one thing we saw a little bit of last year that seems to be a thing every year is uh, smartphone-controlled robots. Uh, as you can see here, they're all dancing. Um, earlier, before I actually got my camera out, he had two of them fighting, uh, rock'em, sock'em, robot style. Uh, here you can replace the head with uh, a smartphone face. And yeah, those are the MIPS. Uh, this item I'm going to pause here to talk about for a second. Uh, we saw a little bit of last year, but um, I don't think I got any footage of. Basically, this is a mirror that you stand in front of. Um, basically, it's a camera and a TV screen that works as a mirror, so you can see yourself as you would in a mirror. Uh, but it'll project different outfits over top of you. So, like, if you like, oh, what does this shirt with this pair of pants look like? And then it would overlay it over top of you uh, based on 
a projection of your frame. So you can kind of test out different outfits without actually having to try them on and digging all your clothes out of your closet. And then once you find out what you want to wear for the day, then you go get it out of the closet and put it on instead of uh, basically messing up your room, throwing your clothes everywhere, ladies. So unfortunately, she was doing an interview there, so we couldn't actually get footage of her doing it. Um, there's the projection thing that kind of shows uh, the clothes being projected on you. It's called the C-Mirror if you want to check that out. Um, again, here we just got another pair of smart glasses. Uh, this was a thing called the Scan and Cut. Um, this is just something that personally interested me. These do exist in the retail market already, so this one wasn't really new or revolutionary, other than I think this one had um, the ability to cut out a vinyl, which is kind of cool because uh, usually the ones that cut out a vinyl are very high-end and very expensive. Um, so that's kind of what interested me about this. Basically, you can program in an image, and it'll cut it out of whatever material you have. So you can make little stickers or whatever and paste them together. Um, I really didn't get much footage of this because she wasn't demoing anything. I could only get what was like on the table there. But that's the scan and cut. It was just a personal interest to me, not really that innovative. Um, again, more robots. Uh, I'm not sure what this was. Um, it was just a little dude kicking a soccer ball, which were little ping pong balls. Um, actually, when we were doing our wrap-up videos for ktdata.net, uh, somehow one of them kicked and bounced off of the goalpost and actually flew in front of KT during uh, his closing video. And the girl was going to come over and get it, but she was like, oh, uh, she didn't want to get in the way of the camera. And then at one point, KT took the camera over to shoot B-roll of this, and she was, like, hiding from the camera. Like She's like, oh, movies, movies, and she like kept moving out of the way because apparently she was didn't want to be on screen. Uh, she was kind of shy, I guess. So, yeah, we ended up giving her back her ping pong ball, and she's like, oh, thank you, and then kind of walked away. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure what the point of this was. It was some Bluetooth-enabled device or something, but it wasn't cleared through the FCC yet. So, yeah, I just basically shot it for B-roll because it was kind of cool, the little guy kicking a soccer ball. Uh, this I didn't get much information on, but it was some new form of wheelchair. Um, from what I could hear of what the guy was saying, it uh, can adjust to fit the person using it better and help them with their mobility. Um, I really didn't get much information, but it's called the, I guess, the wheel with an eye. <laughs> so if you want to check it out, uh, I'm not sure if they have a website or not, uh, but just Google that. You'll probably find it and can get more information about it. This I just filmed because I walked past and saw it and kind of chuckled. Um, I'm not sure if it's what I thought it was, but as I walked by, I was like, oh, look, a big pile of shit. And so I filmed it. I'm not sure if that's actually what it is or if it's supposed to be something else, but it made me chuckle, so I filmed it. Okay, these are um, robot, I think it's robotic modules or something. Basically, they're these little blocks, and each one has a little uh, computer processor in it that tells it to do different things, and as you connect them together, they can form different uh, functioning robots. Like, you can make one that, like, one's got a motor in it, so it'll turn a wheel. Another one's got a light in it, so it'll light up. Another one's got... Uh, uh, I forget what all they had in them, but as you connect them together, you can get them to do different things. Like that one's got a solar panel that'll keep that thing spinning. Um, it can turn on the light at a certain point after the spinning part generates enough energy. Um, so yeah, modular robotics, that's what they're called. Uh, again, here's just another pair of smart glasses. Uh, these are just, again, another desk organizer. Um, I always like desk organization. I hate clutter. My desk is cluttered right now and it's driving me nuts. Uh, but these ones you can attach a keyboard, uh, your tablet, your smartphone, anything too. So it actually sets up almost like a laptop, but at the same time it's storing your clutter of your pens and your paper clips and things like that. And those are my Kios, um, engineered to hide your desktop clutter. Okay, so as KT and the crew was off doing their interviews, um, I knew we weren't going to be in the hall the whole day today, so uh, I wanted to power run through the hall while they were off doing their thing because... They we they kind of linger a little bit, and then we end up missing half of a haul because it's time to go, and they lingered. Um, so I was like, well, since you guys are doing a couple interviews and taking photos, I'm going to run ahead and kind of scope things out and see if there's anything else of interest, which is when I ran across this item. And I told KT about it. He said he saw it uh, a couple years ago, so it's not really new, but uh, it was the first time I saw it, and it interested me, basically because I'm an aspiring musician myself. Um, I do play the saxophone. I tried learning guitar and keyboard and a couple other instruments, but I failed at those. And uh, this, again, because it had lights on it, caught my attention. Because if you put lights on any already existing object, it's going to catch my attention because I want to know why the lights are on it. So I stopped and talked to the guy. 
And basically what he was telling me was the fretboard lights up based on where you're supposed to position your fingers. And it's actually a tool, um, just like they have the keyboards that have the light up keys so you can learn uh, what keys you're supposed to hit to play a song. Uh, this teaches you proper uh, the proper fingering for the fretboard, which, um, as you can see right here, if I pause it, you see the top string and the bottom string are both lit up. But once you grab that, it's hard to tell like what your other fingers are, or if they're just hanging loose, or what's going on. And that's the hardest part for me about learning to play the guitar, is you can say, you know, do this string, this thing, this string, this string, or they just like show it on most videos. They're like, so you do the A chord or whatever, and they just hold it, but they don't show you how to properly hold it. And it's like, well, you know, is my pinky actually touching the bottom screen, or is it just tucked in? You know, what is the proper fingering for it? And this light-up fretboard actually shows you. So I thought that was kind of interesting that you can actually learn the proper places for your fingers, which ones are on strings, which ones aren't. And that would probably benefit me because that's the hardest part I have about learning to play the guitar is the proper fretboard work. So as I let this play, you'll see it kind of changes as he strums. Uh, the first setting, the easy setting, which he's got on here, um, basically just lets you learn uh, your right hand technique, which is your strumming pattern. And it, regardless of what you play, it'll uh, play proper. The second setting, the medium setting, is when you have to start doing the fretboard work as well. But the good thing about the second setting is if you hit the wrong note, it won't play anything. It'll only play when you've hit the right note. So you don't get, he said, you don't get a lot of the negative re-encouragement. So like there, he's just strumming it, and it's not playing anything. Okay, now... As you can see here, the way he's got his fingers positioned, again, he was only supposed to have his fingers on the top and bottom string, but you have that middle finger there that is that on a string or is it just hanging there? And that's basically what I was talking about, about having to figure out what the proper hold for each one is. And as you can see, the pinky, it's kind of clearly tucked under, but sometimes that's not even clear. So that's what the light up fretboard is really good for, is learning, okay, your other fingers are just kind of hanging where these ones are supposed to be in a certain position. And then you have the third position, which is the hard setting, um, which even if you play the wrong note, it'll play just like a normal guitar. Uh, so if you hit the wrong note, it'll you'll hear the wrong note, but uh, the light up fretboard is still telling you, okay, you're in the wrong position because you're supposed to be over here. So that is actually pretty interesting as far as my concern. I believe it's called the G-tar. Um, it was on the flag right behind him, but I missed it because it moved down already. So that interested me as an aspiring musician who has trouble learning things like the guitar. Um, I see where it could be very beneficial to someone like me. If you have the same problems with learning guitar, uh, you might want to check it out. I believe he said the price on it was three ninety nine, and that comes with the guitar, uh, carry case, the software, everything. It's all included, and it's like three ninety nine, which isn't a bad price considering most. Um, electric guitars uh, run around two ninety nine on their own, not counting the amp and everything. Because um, I think when I bought mine, I paid close to two hundred for just the guitar and like another seventy for the amp. Uh, I played close to, I paid close to two hundred for my bass guitar, and those were cheap like Walmart versions. So yeah, um, three ninety nine price point on that to have a accessory that better teaches you how to play the guitar, in my opinion, is worth the price. All right, so moving on. Another thing we saw a little bit of last year and didn't see a lot of this year other than this table is basically USB or other cords, again, uh, with lights in them. Um, they have different colors, so obviously you could better associate what's plugged into what port, and they have lights on them so you can see them in the dark. If you're, like with me, if you're crawling around under a desk and it's dark under there and you're trying to figure out what plugs into where, uh, a little bit of light helps. Uh, this company I just passed by, I think KT stopped and talked to them for a little bit. I'm not sure how to pronounce their name. Alua, something like that. Um, but basically they have different uh, keyboards, mice, uh, headphones that are uh, basically just have odd designs to them. As you can see on the wall there, they're just meant to uh, kind of catch your attention. Um, not really most form functional because they seem a little bit bulky to me, but if you're just looking for something with an interesting look to it, like I said with the iPhone cases, you can't really innovate them that much because they have to still fit the iPhone and be comfortable. Um, so these were uh, basically just kind of let's design something that looks pretty over function. 
So, yeah, but they still look fairly functional. I did look at a couple of the display models they had, uh, but panning over the wall was an easier way to show uh, the wider variety of their product. Which brings us to the end of the day, which is the CES 2014 Innovation Design and Engineering Awards. Um, we didn't get over here last year, but basically anything that's been nominated for award for innovation or originality uh, is displayed here, whether it won the award or it was just nominated. Um, they're displayed here. So actually, if you hit this hall first and kind of look around here, then you can kind of look for things that you want to kind of see and talk to people about a little bit more um, on the show floors. So you can actually figure out, okay, like, this was nominated for award, so let me, and it interests me enough, let me go find these people where they're at. I can look it up on my little paper, and I can go there and talk to them and get more information about it. Unfortunately, we don't do it that way. We just walk the floor, and whatever catches our attention, we just stop and talk to the people. Uh, but for people who are, if it might be your first year going to CS next year, and you want to kind of have a better fig way to figure out, like, what to hit, that would probably be a better way to go. Uh, this last bit here is just a display to, uh, cube with uh, images flashing on it that, again, as a amateur artist, it looked interesting, so I filmed it. Um, really didn't serve any purpose. Uh, here you just see it in the background as I'm doing my closing comments. And that was it for day four as we go to the closing card and eventually fade out to black. Um, like I said, uh, do, I'm going to do one of these very short one for the CES Day 4 extras, those unusable footage that I cut out. I still want to talk about some of it and tell you what it was. But other than that, that's Day 4 of CES Commentary. So I'll be right back with the other video. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.